Okay, John chapter 1, verse 43, we'll start here. Now, this isn't the video I was going to make. Um, I was going to make a video about Nathaniel, which I will do. It will follow this one. But just going back to verse 43 here. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find a Philip and saith unto him, Follow me. There's an incredible amount of maybe misunderstanding about this expression, follow me to follow Christ. It's got a lot of legalist connotations. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at Andrew today. Not so much Philip. Or Nathaniel, or even Peter. We're focusing on Andrew so that we can get an understanding of this word follow me or the word follow because we tend to fall into traps. And the trap being that because the legalists say, see, you've got to follow Christ. And in our zeal and efforts to <laughs> refute legalism, we tend to go all around the garden, up and down the garden path, trying to give this some meaning. And it's really very simple. Follow me is not an order or a command. It's an invitation. Let's just have a look at the word itself to begin with, and then we'll go into some scripture concerning Andrew and maybe others. So follow, follow me. The word follow there, G190 in the Greek, G190, Akolutheo. Akulutheo, Akulutheo, and pardon my pronunciations, they're not great. Um, so you'll see, Kaluthos, a road, Kaluthos being the root of Akulutheo, Kaluthos, a road, Properly to be in the same way with, that is, to accompany, specifically as a disciple to follow and to reach, to accompany, to be in the same way with, to accompany from Kaluthos a road. It should be pretty clear that when Jesus says, follow me, it's an invitation to accompany. And he's literally saying, follow, meaning a road, or from the root of a road away, follow me. I am the road, I am the way. Anyway, let's get out of the Greek, back into the English back into the scripture, okay? So the day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth, notice that Jesus is doing the finding, findeth Philip and saith unto him, follow me. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Philip. And if we back up earlier in John chapter one, we'll look at Andrew a little bit so for context then we go back quite some way now so we've got john the baptist he's baptizing and he's baptizing in bethabara beyond jordan where john was baptizing so this is 
nowhere near the Sea of Galilee. This is way, way south um, toward Judea. Okay, you can search these things out on a map. And this is before Jesus returns to Galilee and finds Philip. So the reason I'm pointing this out is because of this. The next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore I am come baptizing with water. Okay, so we've got John baptizing here in the Jordan at Bethbara. Again, the next day after John stood and two, two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Okay, so John stood, and two of his disciples, so he had more than two disciples, but two of his disciples, looking up upon Jesus, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, and the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Okay, so there's no mention here of these two being asked, ordered, or commanded to follow Jesus. They're doing it because John the Baptist says, This is the Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God. They've heard him speak now. I'm guessing this is Jesus, maybe. This could be John or Jesus. They heard him speak. I would assume they're hearing Jesus speak because faith comes by the hearing of the word of God, not John the Baptist. So the disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following. So this is important. They've not been commanded or asked to follow Jesus by Jesus. Okay, they're following him of their own will, by their own understanding after hearing him. And John's declared that Jesus is the Lamb of God. So Jesus turned and saw them following and saith unto them, what seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two, which heard John speak and followed him, was Andrew. Simon Peter's brother. One of the two was Andrew. Now, we're not very sure who the other is. The other is not Peter, okay? How do we know the other is not Peter? Because when Jesus says, come and see, Andrew First findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. So, Andrew and one other follow Jesus of their own free will. Look at what Jesus says, What seek ye? They call him Master, Rabbi. And ask him where, where dwellest thou? And he saith unto them, Come and see. Now, come and see. It's an invitation. It's not a commandment or an order. 
they came and saw okay come and see they came and saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day for it was about the tenth hour so it's late it's getting late in the day there so one of them is Andrew one of the two is Andrew the other one is not his brother Peter because when he's asked to come follow Jesus come and see he first findeth his own brother Simon saith unto him we found the Messiah which being which is being interpreted the Christ and he brought him to Jesus he brought Andrew brought Simon uh, Simon Peter Peter to Jesus and when Jesus beheld him he said thou art Simon the son of Jonah thou shalt be called Cephas which is by interpretation a stone the, the day following now look at this the day following Jesus would go forth into Galilee okay so all this with Andrew and one other and then Peter so three of them three disciples gathered is at Bethabara in the Jordan which is a great distance or a reasonable distance from the Sea of Galilee and from Bethsaida which is on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee where Philip Andrew and Peter are from the city of Andrew and Peter okay now let's go to Matthew chapter 4 Matthew chapter 4 uh, Jesus fasts 40 days okay so whilst Jesus is fasting John the Baptist is cast into prison and when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison he departed into Galilee so obviously this is much later from when John was baptizing in the River Jordan and leaving Nazareth he came and dwelt in Capernaum which is upon the sea coast in the borders of Zabulon and Nathalim that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah, that's Isaiah the prophet and so on and so forth but I want to get to the part where here verse 18 and Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee so the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee okay you have Capernaum and Bethsaida on that coastline you can look these up on a map um, they're quite close together that's where Jesus is now he's walking along the coast of the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee Jesus walking by the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren brothers Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers and he saith unto them follow me and I will make you fishers of men see follow me but both Andrew actually both Andrew and Peter are already following Christ Andrew and one other followed Christ they went over from John the Baptist from his circle of disciples they went out from John the Baptist into the circle of Jesus now he didn't exactly have a circle at the time they were probably the first few of the disciples to actually follow him but we know that they're already following him so he says unto them follow me and I will make you fishers of men it's an invitation this cannot be some kind of commandment to be saved because they're already following him Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother so again he's inviting them just like 
Earlier he said, come and see. Follow me again, same kind of thing. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Okay? <laughs> it's, it's quite simple, really. Jesus is inviting and these men, they're fairly young men, we can safely say, because we know that Peter had a long, long ministry after after Jesus when they went out to become the apostles. So follow me, simple invitation. Let's have a look at a couple of other things in the scripture. Okay, I just want to show you a quick passage from John chapter 4. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, saith unto him, Sir, come down ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. So the nobleman believed, we've got it written here, and the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, And he believed here, here and here. So he knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed. But he's already believed here, okay? So Jesus says, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed. And what did he do? He went his way. He goes to sort out his family stuff. Okay, go thy way. Now, in Matthew chapter 8, Jesus was entered into Capernaum. There came unto him a centurion. This isn't the same nobleman, okay, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant, Life at home sick of the palsy grievously tormented. So the nobleman had a sick son. This centurion has a sick servant. They're not the same person. Okay. Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. Okay. Now I'm not going to go through the whole conversation here. But I want you to see... Verse 13, Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so it be done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the same, self same hour. Jesus is saying, Go thy way, thou hast believed. And his servant was healed the same, self same hour. Where does the centurion go? He obviously goes because he's uh, a centurion, he's got. He's a man of authority in the military. He's got many men under him. He 
He's also got family and servants, etc. So he goes and returns to he goes to attend to the matters of his house. Okay, there is a point to this. I'll show you now. So in Mark chapter 10 from verse 46, this is Jesus and others. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Okay, so there's, there's three examples there, okay? So a nobleman had a son who was sick. He believed Jesus' word. He believed the word that Jesus spake and Jesus said, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man returned to attend to the matters of his household. Jesus said, go thy way. He was a believer. He believed. He had faith. Jesus healed his son and said, go thy way. A centurion with a sick servant also has a conversation with Jesus. You can look through that conversation in, uh, where was it, Matthew 8. And... Jesus, seeing the centurion, has faith and believes, heals the servant and says to the centurion, go thy way. And here, a blind man showing great faith in Jesus, calling on the name Jesus of Nazareth, thou son of David, asks Jesus to heal him, he's showing faith, he's a, he believes. Jesus says, go thy way, but this man follows Jesus in the way. So, as a believer, whichever way you go, whether you physically go to attend to the matters of your household, the matters of your employment, or wherever, or if you literally just follow Jesus uh, in the scripture or whatever, wherever you go, the way is Christ. This is the point. When Jesus says, go thy way, to a believer, they're already in his way. Thy way is his way. So to follow Christ is not some kind of legalistic uh, commandment when you're a believer wherever you go whatever you're attending to you belong to him you are in his way he is the way it's really really simple there is something in the old testament one moment okay so <laughs> i marked this the other day because I was talking about this in a, in a different video but look go thy way there's that expression again 
Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, drink thy wine with a merry heart, for God now accepted thy works. Go thy way. So here in Ecclesiastes, Solomon speaking, talking about the bread and the wine, which means in union, in fellowship, fellow and follow, fellowship and fellowship, kind of the same thing, okay, you follow Christ, you're in fellowship with him, go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, drink thy wine with a merry heart, that's the union we have in Christ, because thy way is his way, when you believe, it's not something you do, it's just the way, it's just a state of being, go thy way. Let thy garments be always white, garments, white garments, in the book of Revelation, the white garment is the righteousness of the saints, let thy head lack no ointment, okay? So I'll leave that there. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.